So John, I'd like to welcome you to our alumni Mi Camino series. Thank you for joining us. Um, our guest today is John Santignon, and thank you for being here, John. Oh, it's a joy and a pleasure. It's always great. I'm uh, honored to be a part of this series, especially with my alma mater. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. It's awesome that you could be here. John, you came to UC San Diego as a transfer student, a scholar athlete from UC Santa Cruz, and today you're a published author, an entrepreneur, and a global speaker. So I was hoping you might share with our audience what inspired you to attend university. We'd love to know about any particular events that happened in your formative years that shaped your desire. Well, you know, growing up in Tucson, Arizona is where I, where I grew up. And, um, you know, I just had a dream that I wanted to uh, attend college. I didn't know what college was, um, and um, as no one in my family had gone. So it was a first time experience to even think about it. Um, but that was so far in the future, I had no idea what would, what would transpire. So what, ha what ended up happening is I, I became involved in athletics and basketball in particular and became better and better as, as I got older. And s literally throughout my high school years, um, success came and then that's when perhaps college was more of a reality for me at that point. And uh, it all really kind of started there um, with that inspiration that perhaps I could use basketball as, an, as a tool to get an education. And, uh, and so that's, that's what happened, you know. But this was uh, prior to the years of, of social media. Uh, there was no such thing as an internet. Um, and so it's very complicated to, to be discovered. Um, it was mainly by any magazine publications that came out on your athletic achievement and success. Wonderful. And I'm wondering if you might describe a little bit about your childhood and your family, uh, where your family is from. So I, I, I was born in, in Chihuahua, Mexico, in, in a little small town called Nuevo Casas Grandes, and I was given up for adoption. And so my, my parents in Tucson, Arizona, uh, had wanted a, a, a child. And uh, so they, they reached out and and were luckily able to come and get me. And so that right from birth, you know, I think within, within a four day span, you know, I'm, I'm raised in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, it was due to them really about my success because their emphasis about me having an education. Um, I went to a private school, a uh, Catholic school in the, in the South side of Tucson where I grew up. And and it was always emphasized, no matter what I did, school came first. And that was how I was going to, to have choices in life, is how they put it. And uh, so those were the formative years. Total support on, on everything that I wanted to do. Uh, but academics certainly came first. And, and so that was the driving force behind, I think, behind my 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 quest and, and how I realized how I was going to use athletics to eventually achieve a higher degree of education. Awesome. And why did you choose to transfer to UC San Diego? You transferred in. Um, we were lucky to get you. You're such an amazing, amazing scholar athlete. And your degree, I think, is in economics. So was it economics that drew you to UC San Diego or something else? During my time at UC Santa Cruz, in, in the world of basketball, I had led the United States. I had led the country in scoring as a college athlete. And so uh, while that accolades were fantastic, I had had a, a difference with a new coach that had come in during that time period. And uh, we just didn't see eye to eye on some things. And, and meanwhile, I had, I had over the summer developed a relationship with the head coach at, at, at UC San Diego at the time. And over the summers, I would spend my time at, at Coach John Wooden's basketball camps and others, and we would run across each other. And he always jokingly would say, you know, if you've ever wanted to transfer, I have always have a home for you. And this happened years, you know, since I was a freshman at the time, uh, up until that junior year. And, uh, and then I took him up on that offer one day. I remember knocking on his, on his door and asking him uh, that, 
if if indeed that was the case that I was I was willing to transfer I uh, had made that decision and and went forth two feet in you know and and uh, totally transferred over to UC San Diego and it was for one year of my playing career so it was a uh, it was a big move on my end uh, but it ended up being probably one of the best things I ever did. What made it one of the best things you ever did? Well, one of the things is that it was a bigger market and I had to change my my role as an athlete and and learn how to adjust. Um, and so I had to I had to show new new team not only new teammates but prove my worthiness but also show them the sacrifice that I was willing to to do that for them. And so I totally changed my role as a as the nation's leading scorer to now a point guard as a facilitator to help each one of them. And uh, it took some time because there was there's some trust issues. There's a new kid in the in you know coming in and and I also had the rigors of academics. It was uh, very very strenuous. But the opportunity to play in a bigger market within San Diego and play uh, bigger teams. Uh, was something that I was I had a thirst for and a quest to do, and uh, luckily my coaching staff was remarkable. So it was it was a overall a great transition because I came from that bigger market. It helped my professional basketball career to to really take off. Awesome. And so maybe if you're comfortable, if you could share maybe a really fond memory that you have at your time at UC San Diego. Like you mentioned, um, you were a scholar athlete. Uh, you were a team captain, a leading scorer, uh, Hall of Fame inductee, MVP. Uh, the accolades um, are quite impressive. And so I'm wondering, what was life like for you as a scholar athlete? And what fond memories do you have, or perhaps even challenges that you had that you had to uh, resolve? Well, there are many, you know, first of all, being a, like I said, like being a new kid in a new school, you have to learn how to gain friends. How do you gain them? You know, uh, they have to learn that you're willing to, to be part of them and so on. Joining a team is never an easy thing. It could be fostered from a, from, from coaches, obviously. And, uh, but, uh, but truly once that, that becomes a interpersonal relationships need to be built. So how are they built? They're built. They're built not only on the court, mainly off the court. And uh, so, having these discussions were critical to me. Uh, to how was I going to show my teammates that I was willing to be a part of them? Well, I had to show first of all that I was an, a dedicated student, and uh, and that my major was a tough one. You know, economics was 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 difficult for me. Um, I had many challenges, you know, I would, uh, because there are many times when you're on, uh, representing an institution of athletics, doesn't mean you get a pass in the classroom. You are still required to, to take in all that, all that information, <clears throat> pass any and all exams that are given to you, whether or whether or not you were there or not. So that responsibility fell on you on top of, on top of your other responsibilities on the road. So that meant that I had to rely on some of my teammates and ask for their help and vice versa. So it was reciprocated efforts. That was, that was fantastic. The other were just shared memories of, of just doing the simple things together, uh, going and having uh, lunch together, going and just uh, sitting and talking. The, the differences really became relaxed at that point and, and, um, uh, and willingness to, 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 uh, to accept criticism and critique. Mainly I took that role on because as a coach, it is very easy for, for coaching staffs to push athletes. Um, and sometimes the other athletes can't, maybe can't take that pushing that day. I took it upon myself to absorb that push uh, from from the coaching staff, so that my ath my my players could see that I was willing to to sort of take the hits for them, and it was essentially building up credibility, so that I would need that later, and uh, 
And ultimately, we ended up relying on one another to to get through to the to get through to graduation, really. So it's a full circle. It is a full circle. I'm wondering, you know, um, do you lived in the dorms. Is that is that accurate? What was, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Was, what was dorm life like? Well, so, you know, I, um, you, you're, you're thrown in with people that you just, you know, at that time I did not know. So as a, I'm, I'm accustomed to being with at a different institution and now I'm at a brand new institution. And so it's uh, new people again, not, they're not from the athletic world. So they weren't on my team. They were just other students. And so, it's really what college is all about. It really is that, you know, I now at my age, I really understand that college is not what you learn inside the books. It's what you learn interpersonal relationships with one another coming from different ethnicities, coming from different viewpoints, different cities, uh, different religions and so on and finding some commonality and, and, and agreeing to disagree at times as well, but mainly, to spark an interest as to, to have a thought, like maybe something, I didn't think of that. And, uh, and that's, that's what it did. It provided me that window of opportunity to, again, you're, you're, you're contributing, uh, to a household and, uh, learning how to live with new people. So it was, uh, it was great. You know, I love it. Uh, I, there's a lot to be said for living in, in, on campus housing, because once you go off campus housing, it is a whole lot. It sounds like it's better, but it is a lot more difficult to do anything because you're, you are removed from the campus life. In my time working at UC San Diego, I've spoken to a lot of you know, Latino students. And very often they tell me that their primary reason to go to college is to be better positioned to help their family and their community and, of course, themselves. Um, and generally it's in that order, actually. And how has college enabled you to give back to the people or causes that you care about? What college gave to me was the ability to have choices in life. That's what I gained from it. The, once I had achieved that degree, that was something that couldn't be taken away from me. I realized that a job could come and go, houses, cars, even significant others and spouses can come and go. But what I put inside my head and what that degree held for me was choices in life. I didn't have to accept certain things. But it also gave me that responsibility that I could now help others, provide for others, inspire others, and share as testimony to what my value of that education was for me. Um, my own children, you know, are, are, are in college and... Uh, and they, they see the fervor in which I admire what that experience is all about. You know, it's with the passion that I have that that experience was rare in life. And would I go back? You bet. In a minute. You know, because that was the time of life where everything was remarkably at the forefront. And you had a voice and you could contribute. And yet you didn't know what you were doing, really. You know, and... And it was just to give you that opportunity to think for yourself, interact with various people. And ultimately, I came from such a sheltered background that I thought, you know, that I was listening to new music that I had never heard before. I was learning of new religions I never knew existed. I was tasting food never had before. You know, so all of that happened when I was in college. And so for that, I'm grateful because it did allow me the opportunity to take risks later in life and move all around the world, which I have and without any hesitation, because I learned what I did in college. I could apply um, to anywhere that I lived in the world. Um, and I, I appreciate the fact that you mentioned that your children are also in university right now and. The reason I appreciate that is because uh, attending a university like UC San Diego really changes your whole family tree, right? You essentially can raise an entire generation up um, by one person's choice to, to go to university and to complete university. 
I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about graduation day and what, what was that like for you and your family? So the grad, first of all, I never thought I could get out. <laughs> you know, that's what, that I'm not going to be the only one at, at UCSD that's going to say that, you know, it seems forever that you're, you're in, in the institution and you don't think you're ever going to find a way out. But luckily you do and you get to the finish line. And the finish line for me was such a celebration that being the first in my family tree to ever go to college. My mom and dad only had a sixth grade and eighth grade education. So the value for them, I saw at an early age, was to go on. But once I got past eighth grade, I mean, I was beyond their, their level of comprehension. And so everything was on top of that was, was, was gravy to them. And, and they wanted to live vicariously, just like all parents do. They want to live vicariously through their son or daughter, through their eyes, so they can kind of re recall their own memories. But more so for my parents is, what was that experience like? What am I taking in? How am I handling this opportunity that's coming to me? They had no idea what that was all about. And we're very curious to know. And I found that to be a very important part of my, of my journey was to allow them that experience and let them know uh, what, what it was like as a daily student, what it was like with the trials and tribulations that came with it, and hearing their own words of advice. Uh, every person that you speak with has overcome something great. And while they may not understand it, they can give you their interpretation or they can remind you that at one point you fell down a lot. You got right back up, you know, and that's the message that's there. Because to get out of UC San Diego was an achievement. If you've gotten in, it's an achievement. You, you were already competing with the best in the world. And uh, and that that you'll know that when, when you're in your first day of class, you'll, you'll know who, who you're competing with. And it never ended, it was a competition. So when I got to the finish line, uh, it was an incredible celebration. Uh, I remember the day vividly, um, having to put the robe on and feeling accomplished, uh, walking to the ceremony with all these other graduates, sitting outside, listening to some some guest speaker who I believe was an astronaut and had, you know, an unbelievable resume. And, and then to be awarded upon my getting my degree, walking down the steps, seeing my, my mom and my sister and er, everyone else. But more importantly, my, my head basketball coach there with a bottle of champagne to greet me on, <clears throat> on my steps down. And, uh, you know, that was a that was a wonderful touch, you know, to to see them to see them come to the graduation. And that whole day and that whole ceremony lasted throughout the eve the morning, throughout the late evening. Um, as we went from party and to to another re reward and award ceremonies, it's respectively throughout the campus. Um, for me, it was a point of <clears throat> relief an accomplishment of, uh, but for my mom, it was vicariously, she had gotten a degree. It, you know, I, I always joke, you know, that, that, that day and that evening, that bottle of champagne was hers. And, uh, she celebrated every single place we went to the whole time because that felt like she was part of it. That's a lovely story. Thank you. I, I could see that image as you were describing it. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Earlier, you mentioned that, you know, you would uh, speak to your parents as you experienced whatever little trials and tribulations through your time at, at university at UC San Diego, which is common. Um, and so sometimes I feel like I, I'm also a first generation uh, university graduate. And sometimes I feel like our parents because university is so foreign to them, they're not sure how to help. But their advice, the, the consejos they give are so, so amazing and supportive. And I'm wondering if you recall anything specifically, a specific 
advice or consejo that was given to you that still still resonates with you today? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are so many, you know, that, that I have forgotten at this point, you know, um, but what they would do is they would reflect back to things that I had already a- achieved and accomplished. You're 100% correct. They don't understand the, the level of difficulty and the magnitude of what you're going through perhaps, and can't, can't, can't to thoroughly help you in that regard. But what they can do is give you examples throughout your childhood of things you overcame and give you simple, simple reminders that stick with you. Uh, one was uh, I was a BMX racer at the time at, when I was earlier in life. And and uh, I had a very big race. Uh, and I remember my mom walking up to me and literally as I'm getting into the starting gate, whispering constantly in my ear, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And, and it became that little bit of a mantra. I end up winning the race, but that's the storyline that she would share. Do you remember? And it would take you back to places where you had doubt, non-belief, simple storyline, and little mantras like that that would stick with you. Right, they're, they're inspiring. They, they reignite the flame. And even if I couldn't, I still said to myself, I think I can, I think I can, and get up and walk around and scream or whatever I had to do, and then dive back into that material that was crazy hard uh, to, because someone else had a belief in me. I did overcome, and I think that's something that all of us in life have to do from time to time. We, we think these obstacles are so great, but if you look back at your timeline of life, you've overcome a lot. And you may have gone around it, <laughs> the obstacle, you may have cut through it, you, in lots of different ways, but you figured out a way. Thank you. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, you have quite the resume um, after you graduated you went on to play professional basketball. Um, you are a talent scout for major teams in the United States and abroad in the world. Uh, you've published, you're a published author. Um, what are you doing right now professionally? Ah, so currently, I, up until the pandemic hit, I was coaching professional basketball in Japan. And so I returned back right, right in the first of April uh, a year ago. Um, and so the pandemic affected everybody in throughout the world. And what it did was allow me an opportunity to, to write my second book. And uh, so I decided I would write a book on, on the quest that I undertook five years ago to go search for my birth parents. Um, I had no name and no, no photograph. And, uh, but I wanted to find out where who I came from and perhaps find out if there was who my parents were and if I had siblings. And that journey led me, you know, throughout years of exploration, of hearing no, of why, uh, and then ultimately to have discovery through DNA. And uh, it was remarkable. It's been a fantastic journey. So I decided to write a book about that while this time period hit. And then I've decided also to uh, teach at, at, at university uh, as an adjunct professor um, and share, just basically share, share as much as I could, help my sons throughout their experience in college and, and, uh, and others help them go to college as well. And everything that I possibly can, it was, um, there were times where I could have left to go outside of the country again to coach again, but the opportunity is one thing during a pandemic at the time, just uh, here's where your reasoning skills come in. Does it make sense? Do I go? What happens? Do I stay there? What, uh, you know, you, so you think of a lot of other things. Um, so that's why, you know, I've always uh, tried to stay busy as much as I can and do everything as, you know, as, as we're all told, we only have one life. So 
you know, do as much as you possibly can. That's, that's really what I do. I try as much, much as I can and meet interesting people along the journey. Um, I feel, uh, you know, as many people have looked at me as a, as unapproachable kind of sometimes because you're an athlete or you're a coach and they just, but you're just a human, you know, and you love the interaction, you know, but they just feel that they can't do that. It's the same with movie stars. You know, they feel that they can't be approached, but when you do approach them, they are full of love and lo they love it. So that's what I do as well, you know, and I go and talk to various people throughout who I see and build a rapport and a relationship with them. Excellent. So I have one last question for you, and it's this. What advice do you have for our young scholars who are listening or viewing this, this video? First of all, the experience will be something that no one can tell you what it's going to be because it will be your own experience. You, you will create what you want to create out of it. Do you want to have the best education that you possibly can get? Do you want that to be in a location such as? And do you want an alumni network that will help you post-graduation? But more importantly, do you want to have choices in life? That's what the value of a UCSD education will give you. Once you have gone through and you have met your fears and you have conquered your fears of not being worthy enough, not good enough, and you've discovered that you are good enough, at that point, you'll have choices in life. You won't be told what to do. You'll be able to pick and choose what you want to do in life. And then you can help everybody else around you. That would be my advice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, John, for being with us today. I really appreciate you giving us the time. I know you're very busy. It's my pleasure, Frank. And if there's anything else I can do for you, you know how to reach me. Wonderful. Have a good day. Thank you.